Oh yeah, got this baby down. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you've been following my maintenance re restoration on this IS300 Sport Cross project of mine, I got the whole front seal, timing belt, water pump, and everything on this side of the, the engine fixed as far as oil leaks go. But I still have a major oil leak on the back end, which is the freaking rear main seal. So today I'm gonna get started on dropping the transmission and getting into that seal so I can replace it. Uh, I'm gonna jack it up today, get under there, figure out what I need to take apart I get to the tranny and all the bolts in there. So stay tuned. Hey, hey, hey. Got the car all jacked up on jack stands on all four corners. In the rear, I ended up using my two stock scissor jacks just for safety. I ended up putting them right there with a little block of wood just to kind of wedge it in case the real ones happen to fail for some reason. Up front right now, I've got all four right here onto the frame rail. And then I, I left the hydro jack right on the subframe right there just in case. So my dilemma right now is I have to cut these exhaust bolts off because those things are basically rusted off. I'll attempt to shoot them off but most likely I'm about to go and just grind them off. The middle one I'll probably just leave and I'll probably cut those off off the car because the rear ones are spring loaded so they're not rusted and corroded. Got the first one off. Shooting it off and it broke the head right off of it right there. I'm gonna go attempt and try to get the other two off now. Hopefully they'll just break off like that and then I won't have to worry about grinding it off. So the impact wrench right there made short work of those last two. So they weren't as corroded as that first one that broke off. Yeah, pretty much shoot it off with the wrench on the other side and it got it pretty much off. So I'll end up having to replace those bolts. The gasket kind of fell out too. So I gotta check, inspect all that to see how it goes. Now I gotta unplug the O2 sensor in here. It's the one in the floor. And then end up unbolting the one back there all the way by the differential. And then I'll take this section down of the exhaust. So the easiest way to unplug it is to actually just move your seat all the way forward. Just reach in here right where this vent is. And then the O2 sensor plug is right there. So I already unplugged it and I pushed the, the harness through down here already. So I'm just go back underside and grab it and get out. Took this baby out uh, under car. So this is 18 years worth of corrosion here, especially when it spent more than half its life up in Virginia area. Yeah, this one I'll have to break loose just in case I ever have to open that, clean it up so I can put it back in once I'm done. So we're back under the car now. So what I'm gonna do, I didn't wanna really drain the fluid on here since I'm really just taking it down and putting it back up, but I probably need to drain it because once I take that drive shaft out, it's gonna leak fluid out of that drive shaft. Drain it, I'll end up having to put like two and a half quarts back in as a regular drain and fill. Or I'll drain that, I'll have to take apart these dust shields right here, there, and then there's a little panel right there near the differential. And then once I do that, I can drop the, the drive shaft down. From there, I can start unbolting some of this other stuff like the shifter and uh, some of the bolts up there for the bell housing and get it ready to drop. So 
So I took that little heat shield off right there. It was just three little 10 millimeters. And then I took off this other panel that was covering up most of the drive shaft. And it's a bunch of 10 millimeter screws and threaded screws. So these things are a bit rusted. I'm actually gonna do a cleaning of all these rusted bolts that I take off underneath. I'll have a separate video for it. A little bit of white vinegar soaked for a day or so really cleans these rusted bolts up really quick. So I'll have a separate video for that on a, just a general DIY cleaning video. So to remove the drive shaft, you gotta loosen those 14 millimeters off the differential right there. There's four of them and they've got a nut and a bolt and you should be able to shoot them off if you have an impact. If you don't, you're gonna have to use a wrench and maybe a little swivel cause it's gonna be hard to get a socket on either side of that. And once you unbolt those four, you have to unbolt this two right here that holds the mid shaft right here. Undo those and once you do that, the drive axle just slips right out of the transmission. So the transmission is probably gonna leak some fluid when that happens. So just be prepared to catch some of that fluid, plug up that hole with a towel or a glove or something so it doesn't drip everywhere. Got the drive shaft out, just pulled it out from under the car. These end bolts weren't really as bad as some people thought, but then I was also shooting it off with an impact. Uh, when you're doing it by hand, they're on pretty tight. The threads are pretty fine on there. There's like a special thread. And then that, those center bolts were pretty long. It took forever to shoot them off. And I didn't want to shoot them too fast and have it drop on me. So I took those two out. And then once you get all that out, everything just slides right out and then you can see the shaft up here seals with the oil seal uh, into the tranny. So that thing's leaking right now. So I'm gonna put a glove on the end of that and probably try to prevent any more fluid from now, getting out. I put that glove in there, act like a little condom to keep all the fluid inside. So now I gotta disconnect the shifter. A lot of people just disconnect this 10 millimeter. I think the easy way to do it is just take this little pin out on the side here and then this part pops right off and then you can just take it down just make sure you don't lose all the washers and stuff put it back in there so you remember to put it back some people disconnect it up there by the transmission right here also but i think back here is the most easy to reach spot and then the hardest part right now i think for me being under here is going to be the line so the hard lines is just one solid line all the way to the front near the radiator and then there's like three clips or three mounts along the near the exhaust on the bell housing on the block and up front so you can undo those and then there's two lines that go two hard lines that go in here little banjo fittings undo those yeah that's the only way you could really take it out. you have to undo these right here so you can slip them out you can leave the line there but you need it to move so you could actually pop it out of the banjo holes ran into some issues on this flare bolt in the back here so i got i broke it loose but then it looks like i broke the side that was to the block so when i was turning it it was actually turning the freaking line so i had to turn it back so you can see the line is kind of twisted now so i had to twist it back to this original position i'm gonna have to get like the 19 millimeter hold that back one while i try to break the front nut Oh yeah, finally got that thing off. That was a pain in the ass trying to get that 19 in there to hold the 
the nut side of it to the to the transmission and then trying to get that flare bolt over here off uh, I bent this thing back as good as I could I didn't want it crushed so uh, you know I still have to use this transmission for a little bit until I do my manual swap so I, I don't want it messing up I ended up using some of my dormant vacuum caps that I had bought for another project they fit perfectly over here to block the fluid from dripping everywhere so I'm using those temporarily up here and back there and then on the two uh, hard lines right here just to keep shit from dripping so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna unbolt the uh, bell housing bolts i'm gonna leave these 14s here though i'll do those last because they're the easiest ones to get to i'm gonna try to get these uh, 17s right here there's one right there and i think there's one yeah there's one you can kind of see up top there reach with an extension and uh, probably some swivel bolts up there so i'll get that bell housing then over here, I, there's a couple more bell housings over here that I can get right now pretty easily. And then I think on the back side of here, we're on the engine side going that way, there's a couple more also. So I'll get those as much as I can. Then it leaves me with the last two on top, which are the hardest to get to. And then also the starter. I think the starter, one of the top bolts, is a really pain to get to from the bottom here. So you got to kind of drop the transmission a little bit before you get to the starter. But I'll go ahead and try to get all these now. All right, and got those starter bolts, the two 14 millimeter starter bolts up there out. They were kind of hard to reach. That long extension was able to get that top one. And then that lower one I could probably get to. I still use the extension and a little elbow, swivel elbow to get that one. And then the one right here, that 17 for the bell housing right by the dipstick, I was able to release that. So now I can get underneath and start taking out the starter. I probably need to disconnect my battery right now though. So we got the starter up here, right, right here. So I got to unbolt the power for the starter and the signal. And then I've already released the two 14 millimeters that were on the bell housing from this side. There's one that's on top that's pretty hard to get to. And then there's one a little bit closer down here that's not that hard to get to. And that should take the starter out, just those two bolts. I think I got a couple more bell housing bolts, this one and the one over here is pretty easy. And I think that's it other than these two down here. And at that point, I could drop the engine mounts. You got these two holes in the subframe on each side over here, also right there. So you don't you just loosen them up a little bit and that way the engine has a little bit of movement. And then you could tilt that down and get the two harder bolts on top of the bell housing. So now that I got all the bell housing bolts on the underside here done, now I gotta get start getting these flywheel or the torque converter bolts in here. So what you do is you get this first one and then you turn the crank pulley over here, 22 millimeter on the crank pulley, just make sure you turn it clockwise and you'll move on to the bolts. I think there's six of those in there. So we'll go ahead and remove those now. Once I take these off, I can support the transmission with the transmission jack and lift it up a little bit and then I can unbolt that cross member back there, lower the transmission and the engine mounts because remember when I mentioned the engine mounts earlier, 
So we'll go ahead and loosen those up. You don't take them all the way out. You just loosen them up so that it still holds the engine mount and holds the engine in place, but it gives it some wiggle room. Then that way I could tilt the transmission and the engine down and get those last two uh, bell housing bolts on the top. And once I loosen those, then I can get the, the other two down here and that should be fully free and the transmission will drop off the engine. You guys saw one of my recent jack videos where I was putting this transmission jack together. You'll notice I was complaining that this thing was way too tall. When you put it under here, yeah, literally all I have is like six inches uh, of lift or drop on this. I'm gonna attempt to use it right now, really just so I can lift the engine up. I'm gonna lower it once I drop that cross member back there. Get those two bell housing bolts on top. After that, I might just have to just use a regular jack and a board. That way I can lower this thing down as much as possible. Oh yeah, got the jack down a little bit. The transmission lowered down with the engine mounts loose. So now that we've got it down, we actually have access to those two, you can see those two bell housing bolts right there up top, the two hardest ones to get to. So now I can reach in with my long ass extension, break those off, take those two guys out, and then we're pretty much home free with the bell housing from the engine. I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna get this transmission off the stand. Anyways, I'll figure it out. All right, I got those two hard ass bolts on top out. Now I think I got an idea on how to do this now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna re-bolt this thing back up. I'm gonna jack it up. I'm gonna put the, the cross member bolts back in and then I'm gonna just lower it. The thing is still, the transmission is still in the engine cause I still have a couple more bolts to go there. And this is mounted to the car. I'm gonna take this jack platform thing out. I'm gonna end up putting one jack up front, one jack in the back here and I'm gonna just lower them down slowly so that way I can get it as close to the bottom as I can. And once I get on the floor, I could just slide both jacks out of the way, kind of get this and slide this thing out. I actually have a, a dolly. I might just end up setting it on top of that dolly and see if I have enough room to roll the transmission out. So I made myself a little transmission platform stand right here with my jack. I used that same one inch pin that I had used for the transmission jack. I drilled a hole in a two by four and then I'm gonna use that to hold up the transmission while I take the rest of the bell housing bolts down and slowly load this baby down. So now that I've got all the bell housing bolts unbolted, I'm gonna re-tighten uh, these um, engine mount bolts. I don't need the engine to tilt anymore because I've already got those two bolts on top where I needed to get to to tilt the engine. So I'm gonna re-tighten these things and then I'm gonna slowly try to lower that transmission. Since this is an automatic transmission, I don't have to worry about that shaft. It just drops straight down once we release everything. All right, so I've slowly lowered down a little bit. I've got air between the engine and the transmission. 
So I'm actually separated now. So the transmission is actually just hanging out by itself on the two jacks. I need to get to the other side and undo the harnesses or at least watch out for the harnesses. Make sure there's all the clearance is good. I'm gonna have to crawl under here now and check the clearance a little bit just to make sure that I'm not yanking on anything before I lower it anymore. Oh yeah, got this baby down. Oh man, that was a lot of work, but it eased down pretty well as far as the two jack method goes. And then I got this uh, dolly down here. Uh, I don't have any real clearance to take the bell housing out. I think I'm, I could just jack up the side. Maybe I could jack it up a little higher because I think my jack can go a little higher. And maybe I can get it out off the side because I want to just clean this up even though I'm going to only use it for maybe another year or so while I'm collecting parts i still want to clean it up change the two five dollar seals on either end just in case any of that was leaking and i just gotta make this last so when i was taking apart that harness a couple of the brittle clips also broke but uh, that, that's no big deal now i can get up there and do the rear main seal clean up any other oil and grease and crap from under this car and then put it all back together Oh yeah, got this baby out right here. So happy to get out. I wish I was doing a manual conversion so I wouldn't have to put this baby back, but now I gotta clean 18 years with the oil and grease off this thing. Look at that thing. It's just caked on nasty on this whole transmission housing. Anyways, I'm gonna pressure clean that thing during the day. I gotta, I'm gonna leave the torque converter for now so I don't get any water and crap inside. Once I'm done cleaning it, I'm gonna take the torque converter out uh, replace that seal on the front there replace the output seals they're only like five bucks each i just got some aftermarket ones don't, i'm not gonna invest in this tranny i'm just keep it from leaking oil for now i gotta figure out an easy way to put this thing back in hey guys thanks for tuning in all the way to the end of this video and i hope you appreciate the detail that i went to on how to lower this transmission this project's taken me probably like two weeks now to do i've been slowly kind of doing a piece by piece every night. It looks continuous on the film, but it's uh, you know a little bit every night that it took me to do this. I've got a bunch more content on this car coming up. I've got to change the seal on the transmission. I'm gonna have a separate video for that. I'm gonna clean up the transmission. I've got to clean the underside of the car. I'll have a separate video for that while I'm doing the rear main seal replacement on this car. I also have to do the oil pan gasket since I've got the transmission off already anyways. I might as well do that lower oil pan so I'll have a separate video on that one. If you guys like all that content or you're doing this similar projects for your IS, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Yeah.